each different level of reality is true. A galactic historian is a person that looks at all the lines of dramatic karma. Nudge, nudge. It's the holy grail. <laughs> Improvise. <laughs> Mysterious. It's counter psychic intelligence. Why is DNA farming of this dark cluster so important? Because we do manifest our reality. We do create our reality. Hello? 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 How you doing, caller? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Ireland. Calling from Ireland, and your name is Violet? Yes, that's me. So what kind of questions did you want to start with? Oh, I have so many, but I've always... It's been driving me crazy for a long time. I've been searching for I wanted to know who I am and why I came here. So you wanted to know who you are, why you came here, and so on and so forth. All right, the first yeah, set well, of energy. I've... Yep, the first set of energies that I'm coming in immediately on, on you um, are uh, a nocturian-based blue frequency soul that's been traveling, God, lots and lots of places. I, I run into, I can't tell you how many nocturians in in private sessions and public sessions because they're as much as 35 percent of our population. Here, and you are one of those classic Arturian collective travelers. So you go from place of great experience to place of great experience, collecting the experiences and sharing it in a master codex. And then you come to worlds like Earth and know that you're going to have hard lifetimes and easy lifetimes. But ultimately, at the end, it's going to be reconnecting to the blue frequency wave of spectrum and collective so that the collective experience of all the other Arcturians who have shared their wisdom and information is available to in you in your light body so you could ultimately could become an orator or a teacher of some sort. Okay. Um, I know I've been told I have a lot of gifts, and then I was also told that I have no teacher here that all my teachers are in the spirit realm. Is that true? No, 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 no. You have you have an infinite amount of teachers available to you within your potential. It's about you emanating the frequency of in this state of frequency learning in an equal, non-hierarchical way. Okay. Um, Ka- hold on I one just, second. I, Kathy, hold on one second. Kathy, do you have anything you want to add to that? I would say... Um, I, I also agree with Andrew. I think that there are teachers that are out there, but I think also one of the things that you may, may need to recognize within yourself is that you have a lot of potential um, to actually help others and teach them. So it's not so much that you just are looking, uh, well, possibly looking for teachers, but also that you should consider passing on your wisdom and your knowledge to others. Yeah, I um, I kind of help people all the time. That's all I ever do, and the balance kind of goes off there quite a bit, you know. But um, I just, I don't know. I've been searching for something, and I, I just feel like I was abandoned here. No, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> you came here with a direct, distinct purpose to go through all of the different experiences on the divinity path of life, and at the end there, to show everyone that it, it's as easy as a changing your mind and changing yourself to a, a new frequency and understanding of time. And it's going to be, the, it's the classic challenge of the Octarian DNA system and light body system to revert to universal time. But right now, Roman numeral time has been imprinted on you over and over and over and over and over again. And like Pavlog's dogs, you can't get off the nipple of Roman numeral time. And this has been the crux of your spiritual existence this lifetime. You're helping others, helping others so they can get, you know, off the nipple of time, off of the nipple of Roman numeral time for one second and experience a mystical no time moment. You've had so many mystical no time moments, you've almost become callous to the ones that can really awaken you to a whole new level of understanding that letting go of physical manifest time, Roman numeral, and getting into no time is a process of daily life. Okay, and how do I do that? That's being the urban shaman, the urban alchemist, the urban spiritual person who understands spiritual hygiene is the root of becoming the grand master. Okay. 
allowing yeah, the separation been... of densities in your life so that when negative people are in your life, they cannot dump karma upon you, cannot take and steal your energy at will. Yeah, I've had a lot of people trying to steal my energy. I've had a lot of people come into my life and try to interfere on my path, and it's just it just keeps happening and happening and happening and happening, and it just doesn't seem to stop. But I keep plowing through and keeping strong. Well, I just, um, I've kind of had enough of it now, and I had a store here in the middle of, uh, I'm in the middle of the country in Athlone, uh, very close to Ishnok, and um, I've just, I had an angel and crystal store here, and I've been sitting here for two years, and everybody's been in here dumping <laughs> a lot on me, and um, I've been working on the ley line here, and it's just, I have to close my store now, and I just don't know what my next step is, you know? Why are you closing, <clears throat> Why are you closing the store? Because there's no money, and I've been working for free here for two years. My husband calls it my hobby, <laughs> and uh, I just, just, I can't do it anymore, you know? So Kathy, I... Kathy. I I'd say one one of the first things I see with you is that you definitely need to take a break. Whatever it is yeah. you've been doing, you are exhausted. I mean, drained. I just, it's just, it, even me looking at you makes me feel exhausted. Um, so number one, look after yourself. I just had my tooth pulled this morning. <laughs> no, no wonder. <laughs> Literally drained. I know, didn't sleep <laughs> last night. I my tooth cracked and I had to get pulled this morning, so I I don't feel the best today. <laughs> well, that would explain some of it, <laughs> but certainly yeah. you do need to take some time for yourself. And when I say time, I mean like at least a month. Don't just think a, a few days, a week or two. No, minimum one month. I mean, literally, just do nothing except rest, recuperate, bath, walk, eat whatever you want healthy or not healthy, sleep whatever hours you want, just regenerate yourself. Because until you get regener uh, re sorry, rejuvenated, you will find everything is very difficult for you. And I look at one of the things that has been going on for you, and I'd say one of the reasons that you, you may have experienced that you're having trouble with the business was not so much that there was no, no market or no business, it's that you were too nice and you gave stuff away for free including your time, lending stuff is still giving it away because they're not giving it back. And that is great because you're a nice person and you did a good thing, but now it's time to, to rethink your strategy of life and think more about how are you going to best go through it, not be the giver all the time. And I don't mean become the taker. I mean be more in your power and work out what it is that you want to do and how you can best do it and still have abundance. Okay. Um, gone. No, I just, uh, it is true. I, I, it, it's more of my energy that I was giving away here. I, I didn't give much free. Like, I give people gemstones and stuff like that when I feel they needed it, but it was but that mostly is, people. That is an energetic exchange of your abundance that you didn't realize as you were giving abundance through that crystal, which was storing a lot more energy that was specific for your business. There's yeah. a multidimensional understanding to, to abundance here. And in the business that you have, if you're considering closing it, you have to understand you, you did your best. And the crystals oh, and all yeah. of those other things that are there are still going to be waiting for you. And it's not mean that you can't open it later. You're just in the signature frequency now where rest, recovery, and recuperation are the most vital words that you have to speak each morning you wake up. Because there's a whole new perspective once you get past the tired point, once you get past the point of your energy not being there. That person who decided to open that business in the very first place gets a whole new perspective and say, this is how I can streamline the business. This is how I can make it function better. This place didn't work for me. I need a better position, another place, you know, you know, maybe looking for a, a better location is another concept. Yeah, I, I when I when I first wanted to do this, I, I just wanted to do my um, healings and therapies, and I got landed this uh, the whole building <laughs> with uh, the retail and everything. And I enjoyed the retail for a while, but I really wanted to do my healings, and and I 
just when I got in here, everything was going well, but then the economy, people just didn't want to spend. And I ended up putting all my attention into the retail, trying to make that work. And I kind of let the whole the therapy and the healing side of me just sit on the side burner. And now, after two years of trying, the business, it, it hasn't paid. I'm just barely making one week to another, and my healings haven't got off the ground. And so now I've decided to just go forward and, and just maybe do a private practice instead. And I just don't know if that's the right thing, if I'm making the right decision. I've already put a closing down sign on my window, so I just... Kathy, um, Kathy you want to address the business? Um, I would say that it's... An interesting scenario that you've got yourself into and one which is much more common than you think. You start as therapist, end up becoming retailer. Uh, it was never your goal and not your strength. I understand why you did it because, I mean, it's the nature of, let's call it the new agey kind of stores, but your strength was never with the retail. It was always in you. And by you yeah. not doing, uh, not having the time to uh, attend to people, the interest level and the frequency of people coming has dropped. So your thought of maybe just doing private practice, I would say, is a good one. Um, but I would look for a center or a, uh, you know, a, a, a group, uh, I don't know what they call them, like a, like, a, like a shop or service like yours, but see if you can do it by appointment at their place. So you, like, rent the room by the hour or by the week, your commitment level yeah. is low. Tanning you salons do. often, often tanning salons often, often, or I'm sorry, hair salons often allow people to rent spaces too. Yeah, that is true. That's true. Um, and then just start back at, you know, ground zero. Get back to okay. what you know. Of course, after your rest. <laughs> yeah, after your rest. You, yes, <laughs> rest first. Then I, need, I definitely need. I haven't seen my kids and. Two years. <laughs> okay, have uh, rusty kids, then <laughs> one by yeah. one. But just take it back slow, because when people understand that you're back doing it, you will definitely attract the people. But you need somewhere that is easy for you to access. Your financial commitment is very, very low, and you have the freedom to come and go. Okay. Only I when you feel that about. freedom can everything else flow for you. Okay, I think so. I think, yeah, I believe that. Um, can you tell me more about the Actur Acturians, please? Sure. What would you really like know. to What would you like to know? I don't really know who they are, to be honest. I, my friend, my research, she's always telling me about them, but um, I'd like to hear more from you as to right, they, they're, um, who they are. They're a frequency of being um, that can function in more than one source stream of time. Their home world is Octurius, which is in our universe and, and which is in our galaxy also, but a very far, far, far away. Um, the, they have been exploring the universe um, since the seventh epoch of our universal expression. Um, their species did not originate in our universe, it came from another universe and then was part of our part of an experience. And when they became ancestral species of this universe, they became essentially like the the cousin of many very new species of light beings who were going to be going through a brand new life and light experience. And this is, was known as the very beginnings of domination and control. And the Octurians were there to teach species a million years or two million years ahead of the time that domination and control might come into their frequency of sovereignty, of spirituality, of creating psychic defense systems that do no harm to any sentient kind, creating and manifesting your reality, understanding that you are a seven-color experiencing frequency being and making sure that the DNA skin suits of different worlds have the DNA architecture and substructure in it so that the different light bodies that were coming from alternate experience planets who were coming to new worlds would have full seven color experiencing expressions and the Octarians are prolific DNA exchangers all over the universe as well into other universes 
so that all species have a connection to their blue frequency technology, which is the mm, quantum instant connection to any other frequency of octarium that's sharing the blue ray collective energy. So in fact, when one connects into there, you have the access to the entire octarium collective species and enable to filter that information based off of the series of of time stream connections or source stream connections that are, are functioning. They are traditionally a seventh density, seventh dimensional frequency being who can function on, on from all the way to the first or all the way to the tenth if they decide to. They have complete manifestation and control of their body. They need not have physical bodies, but they do like to have them because they're a unique, fun experience. So I didn't necessarily have to come here in a body? No. No, you didn't have to. And in fact, you didn't come in a body. You came as a, um, how do I describe this? Um, oftentimes when Octarians are coming to Earth to invest and involve themselves in the paradox, they'll, you'll have several dozen Octarians who, who had physical bodies and, and they would maybe go to a very ancient age of five, ten thousand 10,000 years old in their physical body. So the body is very powerful. And then these bodies unmanifest into energy and 12, 13, 15 Octarians that are doing this come together and manifest into an energy vessel or an energy ship, a consciousness exploration vehicle made of energy. That energy leaves their planetary system and then begins to solidify in a crystalline structure. And then it goes from world to world to world, picking up other consciousness explorers who are similar to the Octarians or Octarians themselves with bodies. And then after a while, those bodies that are inside them become part of the ship until they become a collective consciousness exploring crew. And then that crew will make its way to Earth, and all of a sudden they'll all let go of their unity connection bonds and then come into Earth's astral world based off of their individual source ancestral connection to those astral worlds so they can be directly born into bodies as a source time stream being. Okay. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, what was I going to say? I'm very drawn to the Elohim. Have they any connection to the Octarians? Say that again. I'm very drawn to the Elohim. Uh, have they any connection to the to the um, Octarians? No, they don't. Uh, El El Elohim, is that what you're saying? Oh, probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, there, there is a strict creation that was made for Earth's paradox expressions. They are solar entities, solar astral entities who have are able to manifest it physically into any DNA lineage into the solar system to create an eminent frequency of solar connection. Oftentimes, Elohim are, are put on a particular path of multidimensional function that cannot be understood linearly or multidimensionally because they're connected to a signature frequency of dozens and dozens of suns as manifest energy to resolve karma for some particular purpose. And el Hohim are like road builders, astral road builders at times too. Um, they're, they're like the construction crews of the astral roads in between planetary systems or other solar systems. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why I felt very drawn and somebody told me I was one but um, so I'm not then no 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 you'd have a very okay. very different lifetime if you if you were most okay. Elohim are, are are now channeled through individual beings here on the world and in fact there's maybe in our world seven billion human beings Beings and other 43 billion other beings that aren't aren't identified yet. Of of those 52 billion beings that live live on this world, there's maybe seven percent of them are half incarnate, half reincarnate Elohim, meaning they they're solar entities that are occupying DNA skin suits, but are completely unaware. They would be like. Um, children with Down syndrome or autistic children that are functioning in several realities simultaneously, and they needed to be manifest in this reality to create a manifest eminent equation of having that solar frequency manifest here. Okay. Um, the gifts that I have, uh, can you tell me about them? Sure. Kathy, you want to go there? I think that your one of your great gifts is about the, the healing that you can do for people. Uh, I'm not even sure that you're that aware of how much healing that you can do for others. 
I certainly think that you can feel something and that you feel the change, you feel presences with you, but I think you don't possibly um, appreciate how you manage to, at a cellular level, uh, make changes within people and their energy. And this is something that I think is truly amazing. It, it's a rare gift. Um, I would expect people that you've touched um, or healed, uh, whichever word you prefer to use, um, to come back with really amazing stories. I mean, not necessarily yeah. life-changing. I moved to a different country and, you know, um, found the yeah. man I'm going to marry in a week. But certainly stories similar to that kind of thing. And I think you think people exaggerate when really they're not exaggerating. You just underestimate your own capabilities. Yeah. I was told by someone that I had two extra chakras in my in my arms. Um, they they mm. were balancing my chakras and they saw two extra ones. No, th th those are and not I didn't actually. Understand. Those are not actual extra chakras. Those are actually the connection point to the Blu-ray Octarian technology. Meaning, at some point in in your in your frequency, um, a major part of your source stream tried to enter your heart and go down into your arms, and it was trying to create new synaptic pathways so that your hands can begin to understand the holographic multidimensional world that was around you. And those energy centers were, were actually part of your triple warmer meridian directly connected to your heart that's a part of the pathogenic warmth and cold and would have made a, an incredible chi flow all over your body. But for some reason, that process was never finished. It, it was not able all the way to make it to the tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes. Probably some form of heart betrayal was really close in that environment. Yeah, I've had a lot of... <laughs> and how can I get that to, to actually... Hello? Uh, we, yep, we've had our next caller come in, so we're going to have to end it with you and move on to the next caller. This has been really, really fun. Yeah, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. For people uh -huh. that are like you, overcoming the, the, the lack of energy is about controlling the energy of your reality and understanding who you've given away your power to. And you have to be brutally honest with yourself about who you're really giving away your power to, even if you're giving away your power to yourself. Okay? Then the next yeah. step is the much deeper understanding of what does your bed space mean? You're going to conquer creativity and passion. It comes with deep sleep. Have you ever woken up from a dream and just laughed? Um, yes, I have. Okay. Yes. How yes hard not it, frequently. How hard is it for you to get good dreams? Um, let's see, the basis, most of my dreams, and I've been keeping track of them for a while, seem to deal with mundane things. A lot of them are dealing with architecture. Um, I did have one uh, a few weeks back where I think I really went somewhere and did something. Um, I I had a dream where I had a, um, um, a Merkaba, okay, um, um, and it was enclosed in an orb and a bunch of these lights orb lights like you see on the uh, YouTube and stuff, uh, a bunch of us were together and we were learning how to be orbs and there was a mothership and we were just having fun <laughs> and, and being free and learning how to do that. <laughs> that. That's really, really cool that you were a part of that. Those those orbs, um, they they look for beings that are in, the, in a resonance of unity. 
um, you live in a place that has a magnetic resonance frequency. You have a human resonance frequency called the Schumann resonance. And then you have the overall resonance frequency of the planet and how we interact with the sine wave of all of that energy. And our DNA at times go, rings like a bell throughout the planet and shows that we're in resonance for unity. And these orbs look for people that are in that unity residence and they will gather them 50, 60, hundreds at a time. And you will suddenly be a part of those orbs going through that experience. That means you are literally experiencing global dream time unity in that, in that expression right there. And there are thousands and thousands of other people have very similar dreams where they're flying these vessels and they're chasing their friends or they're playing these games up there because they are assisting the global dream time by doing that in their dreams. It, it was a remarkable dream. It was absolutely um, uplifting and um, uh, gave me a perspective on how much more I am than what I think I am. Any other questions? Um, where did I come from? What planet? Um, you're Arcturian. Arcturian? Yep. You are a part of the Arcturian collective called Jinak Mupor. It's a very old Arcturian collective. And you should be out taking pictures of, of yourself at night and you'll find orbs all over. Take a picture of myself at night. Uh, yes, I have, I have these beautiful lights that always flash around me, and I've never met anybody who has them, and I don't know what they are. They're they're Arcturian vehicles of energy. I, I I have met many many many. If you go to my Facebook wall, you'll meet a gentleman um, who called into the show last week, who I told him to say he's an Arcturian collective also, and he just went out and took pictures of them up for my suggestion. And he is having orbs show up everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Yeah. And so start taking pictures of orbs. But yeah, these I know. are lights that I can see. You know, yeah, these are lights just, that everyone can see because they're Arcturian energy vehicles. But I've never met anyone who's noticed that I have these lights. It's like I can, I'm the only one that can see them. Well, you, if you start taking pictures of them, you'll you'll notice that they extend a zone of trust, so you can take pictures of them. Okay. All right, All right I've got to move on to the next caller. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Two six seven. Uh, your name and where you're calling from. Two six seven. Are you there? Hello. Hey. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear hey, you. Hey, first, first you of all, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was uh, making noise before. I didn't realize that it's the first time I'm calling in. I realized that this was like a conference call type of thing. Uh, I apologize for that. First off, um, it's, it's, my name it's is okay. Andrew. Yep. <laughs> no, I know I didn't. I didn't want to disrupt at all, but uh, I did unintentionally. Uh, my name is Andrew as well, and I'm from Philadelphia area, Pennsylvania. Um, it's my first time calling into your show, but I did listen to your last two shows on Walking in Energy with uh, kind of interview style with Chris Hales, and I got quite a bit out of that. Uh, I've been kind of paying close attention to the information that's been coming out of this alternative media and uh, spiritual based uh, information and there's quite a bit of information out there and it took me a little while to get to the point where I refined my level of discernment to know which things were worth paying attention to and uh, immediately the information that you were giving seemed 100% valid. Not so much that I could corroborate all the information or at least some of it did line up with other things I heard, but just I can there's a level of of uh, trust in your voice that I picked up on, and so I thank you for the the work that you've been doing. It, it's uh, very helpful to people such as me who are 
information day, unfortunately, <laughs> for myself sometimes. Um, I did have uh, one question first, and then I would I would have you give me some type of reading, if that's okay. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Uh, sure. Um, it, it actually is more of along the lines of you were talking about with, on the Walking in Energy show, the event that, you know, a lot of people referred to as some kind of an event that comes up and you spoke to the idea that it was most likely to be kind of a shared dream state in our local communities. Um, and that's very interesting in and of itself, and I, I have trouble even comprehending that 100%. And you also mentioned that, you know, there are certain rule or 12 overseers of this planet at this time, and they're... Of their hands are tied until the 21st of June. Is that what you said? That's correct. We're in timeout until the 21st of June. And I also saw on your website you are going to Mount Shasta on the 21st of June. Uh, is there any uh, is there any correlation there, or is that just coincidental? There is correlation there. there is. Uh, so I, I would that give I was, us an indication about the event. Uh, the event isn't going to happen until you see people in this, out in the street in the same scale and size of the 1960s. And until you see people out marching in that same scale and size, there is no ascension and there is no event. But the event is a dream mm. world location, and it is based off of an understanding that the dream world doesn't function in time, and we still function in time. Right now, the way we measure time is through uh, planetary zones. Um, you know, different time zones, and we're based off of a system that counts the sun in a non-accurate way. We don't operate on galactic time. as It's the way how the solar system goes around the orbit of the central sun, knowing that the each solar system has a, a sine wave that represents its time, and at points in space, the space is very dense, and the sine wave that is the consciousness expression of time for that solar system is compacted. And at other times, it's a very loose space, and the consciousness factor of time for that solar system has expanded. We, as a solar system, has moved it from a very dense place to a very light space. So all the other planets are changing their versions of time, and we are not. So the event is literally outside of time and inside of time, and that's why it's going to be a cooperative dream event amongst the, the various sacred geometry city-states that will be under the ultimate theme of propaganda and that's where the awakening comes in where people awaken to the concepts of what propaganda is and how it's trying to program people the event itself has multiple stages four stages the first part is when people on a soul family level complete soul circuitry um the lady from hawaii who called in yesterday is a classic example of her completing soul surgery by coming forth with her story and allowing all of the listeners to connect to her soul codes and the same as with you, you've called because you have a, a big variety of soul codes that you're wanting to share with the collective. And the collective is that dream space that already exists before the event happens in this version of time. And um, I would like to just uh, ask one more question, and then you can kind of even tie that in with any type of uh, reading that you want, would want to give me. Um, uh Specifically, I've always had trouble, at least as far as, as my adult life, remembering my dreams and certainly getting any type of value out of them, unfortunately. Um, and I've, I've heeded some of your recommendations already that I've, that you just dated to the last caller and you've mentioned on other shows. So is there anything possibly that you can see within any of the My Soul Contract or just more specifically for me? that could help me um, get sure. more the in touch with my dream state. The first thing is, when I when I look at you as an Acacia record perspective, I identify your species, your soul migration, your universe that you immigrated from. You didn't come, you weren't born natural in this universe. You immigrated from a non free willed universe. And you immigrated about mm. 600,000 years ago. And when you first came in, you became part of the Octurian Collective. Are you familiar with Octurians? Uh, I am, yeah. Well, they're a collective of, of spiritual scientists that take consciousness exploration to a very extreme degree. And their whole society is based off of consciousness exploration 
and turning their physical bodies into energy bodies. And the technology that they use uses crystal, where they, they solidify a crystal out of energy and then turn it into a vessel of energy or a vessel that has control systems in it. Then they all enter the crystal and then they all unify in energy and turn the crystal into a vehicle of only energy. And then the consciousness that's, that are inside them explore the universe. They're called vehicles of hope and change, vehicles of creativity, vehicles of intuition. And their purpose is to scan the universe and the multiverse for other Arcturian collective entities that are spreading the word of spiritual science as the way to get through the drama and karma of this karmic resolution phase in our universe because we're a free-willed universe. And until the collectiveness of all the, the sentient species of expression come together, this technology and these people will be out there sharing their wisdom in the form of energy as much as they can. They've actually visited you many times. These are would be like orbs that are in pictures around you. Have you noticed those? Um, I'm very interested in, I watch all the paranormal shows, very familiar with the phenomena. I don't have too many pictures of my own that way I've seen them. But, you know, I, I'm sure they're there. All right. Do you have a camera or a, and a tripod? Yes, I do. What, what, what I'd like you to do is to go out just after dusk and uh, set your camera and tripod up a few hours ahead of time so you know your field of vision, snap a couple pictures and look on the viewfinder of the digital camera. And what you're going to do is you're just going to try to meditate in an area and raise your hands up into the air every three, two, three minutes and then set your camera to automatically click a shot every minute, and then you're going to move around of the spot that you meditated of yourself. And by okay. the third or fourth time of you trying to raise energy and doing an energy-raising meditation, you are going to see orbs all around you. You're a naturally orb-manifesting person. It's because of the Octarian Collective that's inside you. You raise the energy of other people that are around you. That's the nature of your species. And that's also nature of your spiritual contracts that have fine print. There are specific things in your fine print that neuter your ability to raise energy around other people. Okay? Mm. You know, it's like having a dog, you know, spayed or neutered. Quite literally, they took something out of your soul family matrix so you couldn't empower people with the collective wisdom of the Arcturian collective that you're related to as soul family. Wow. Now, as I said, you migrated from another universe into the Arcturian Collective. Many, many people that migrate from a non-free will universe right away don't stay in one physical form. They like to experience several dozen at a time. And you were one that did the same thing. So you were in the Syrians, you were in the Pleiadians, you were in the humans. All of the main drama species you lived multiple lifetimes in while you were still a primary Arcturian Collective person. And then when you decided to leave Arcturus, you re and unified all your pieces parts so you had a semblance of understanding of what the big picture of, of this karmic resolution phase was. This is where you came physically to Earth, even though you had already been here as a soul spark. This is where you were adopted as a new first species of Earth and began a migration of other souls from your non-free will galaxy to come into the Arcturian Collective, do a very similar process as you did, and then immigrate to Earth and become part of that new first species because you were hyper-investing your consciousness into the world grid, into the mountains, into the chakra points, and making sure that you were living lifetimes around these things so there would be a barrier of energy between the forces of domination and control and the actual core energies of Earth. So a very defensive spirit wow. to Earth. So, specifically, I chose to be here at this time uh, because, well, obviously, I have karma to reconcile, but I also have abilities to offer, um, and part two of that, um, how do I nullify any of these limiting, uh, oh, well, you said things are actually removed from me. Are you able to access those, or are they gone? You'll need to meet those in other, you'll, you'll need to meet those in other people. And they'll have the soul circuitry that completes the piece that you're missing. Okay? 
Um, as I said, that mm-hmm. lady from Hawaii that called yesterday, she completed a piece of soul circuit for, circuitry for many other people. You calling the show are completing soul circuitry. Now through synchronicity, because you came forward and you shared your story, the universe and the Earth Mother is going to replay you, repay you with synchronistic events where you may cross someone in the street that is literally the missing piece that you've had, and you'll go through an activation mm-hmm. at that point. But for you, you should be functioning in places of power. You should be going to earth chakra points. You should be going to places where ley lines intersect. And you should very much be into dowsing with dowsing rods. Wow. You would find yourself rapidly in a mask. Okay. I think you've given me enough. I can go from there and I don't need to take any more time. But I really, I really appreciate it. I have uh, my fiance with, with me. Is that okay for you, Gary? Or is, would you rather take other callers and have me call back? Uh, why don't call you back? call? Have her call back because I've got a bunch of other callers waiting. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. God bless. You're welcome. You take it easy. Actually, I'd have, I have two questions for you, Andrew. Sure. Just, just to start off the questioning part of it. This came up, came up yesterday. So I wanted to know where the name Galactic Historian came from. Whose, hmm. whose idea was that? That's a really good question. That stems back to a philosophical organization that stemmed from the Arcturian and Andromedan. Um, I'm going to call them legions, but it's not a military concept. And what these legions did was go out and search for history that was forgotten, and they would make records of it. And they would go to different worlds and learn their Akashic records and share it with the the very founding uh, Arcturian collectives. This was the very youngest age of the Arcturian homeworlds, when their full concept of the collective hadn't been fully explored. And there were a series of other races that were insectoid that had been collecting uh, records from other worlds and suspending them in a... It's a thing they did excrete out of their mouth, and this excretion would turn into a crystal, and that excretion had the entire expression of what it is that they learned. And they shared this psychic technology with the Acturians who bred it into their weaver crystals so that they could go to a, a, a world and literally get a copy of the Acacia record of that world. But it was only up until that moment in which they came there. So there were regular exploration things to the various parts of the galaxy to update the galactic history. Okay, Lakita, are you here? Hi, Andrew. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing really well. We've got a gorgeous sunny day. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Where, where are, are you, you at? In Australia? In Australia. Yeah, that's right. We're, on, we're worldwide over here. So how did you find out about me? Uh, a friend of mine um, sent me a link to one of your shows, Walking in Energy with Andrew Hales. Uh-huh. Um, and um, from there, I I looked at all the galactic history, which blew my mind, and um, I just felt it all really resonated. Um, and then I went back and looked at your reading shows, and yeah, I've been following you ever since. Oh, that is really really good. So, what about the what about the material jumped out at you? What was it that 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 grabbed a hold of you and said, "I want to learn about this"? 
Well, I'm not sure that there was one specific thing. It was more the fact that you have such um, an amazing take on things which very well nobody else has, has been able to explain the universe and the galaxy and the layers and levels of being multidimensional being in the way that you have. And so this is all, a lot of it's new information, even though it feels familiar. Um, you just get to explain things in a way and on so many levels that I guess so many of us have been searching for. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome. I'm, that's, I'm very, that's, very, very good. That, that's really good to hear. So have you heard me do readings before? Yes, I have. Okay, and so you kind of know how this works. You have the Akashic Record of this world and 20,000 other worlds open to you. So what kind of questions do you have for the Galactic Historian? I guess my first question would be um, my, about my soul family, where I'm from, um, what, where I'm working when I, I have these amazing experiences of being out in the galaxy and um, birthing planets and weird things. And I, I don't know where I am when all that's happening or what exactly is happening. In, in those moments so but yeah soul family would be a good place to start okay well first thing first you're you're part of the Arcturian Dolma soul family the main Arcturian soul family one that was on the original thread line of Arcturian creation from 161 million years ago so well, that means you're old first thing you get your free cup of coffee on every planet you go to you got your senior citizen soul card Wow, <laughs> that's huge. Okay, so before the Galactic Ascension Machine was created, and before our plant, our universe was a free-willed universe, you were a soul living here that came from another free-willed universe and immigrated into a non-free-willed universe and became part of the Arcturian Dolma Collective that began mapping out the fundamentals of the universe at that around that 151 to 140 mil, uh, million years ago. The universe was a lot smaller than it is today, um, and there were billions upon billions upon billions of, of, of soul family members who who um, were part of Dr. Indoma groups that literally began mapping the, the, whole, the whole universe. And then they got to a point where they just got about the whole universe mapped, and it expanded. And they're like, well, okay, well, we got to start over. And as soon as they got it mapped, it expanded again and again and again and again and again until we get to around about 90 million years ago. And it's when the Arcturians suddenly realized as soon as you reach the peaks and map everything, it expands. And there's a consciousness at the universal level. And that universal consciousness was leading not only Arcturians but thousands of other species around to look at everything, to map everything, because there was a great change coming, and this change was known as free will. Now, as a light body in a non-free will universe that came from a free will universe, you understood, and you were a seventh dimensional entity, a frequency entity at that point in time, so you didn't need one body. You could have millions if you really wanted to, and in fact, you did. Um, this led you into the next concept, well, what is, what is this universe changing? And you made temporary, we'll just call them mm, vacations from our universe, and the vacation from our universe, you went to another universe and re-experienced free will for a while and made a whole bunch of contracts and deals with other beings that after you gained free will back in this new, in our universe, which would go from non-free will to free will, that there would be this big migration of beings that would come find you who was going to be choose to be a divinity path birthing being, not one, but millions. So you were going to spread your divinity path birthing onto hundreds of different planets, in fact, thousands of different planets. And you were going to use your Arcturian lineage to go and direct incarnate on a planet, bond with the DNA lineage technology that the planet had already had with the intention of giving the soul codes to, to that species that would be able to go and explore the universe up to everything that they had explored when they integrated with their DNA. So you, you kind of see how, how big of a frequency you are? 
Yeah, I, I had an idea it was big, but not that big. <laughs> that, no wonder I'm tired. <laughs> well, that is the next part. The, the next part is you gave birth, the, the, our universe became free willed, and you began giving birth not on one planet, like I said, tens of thousands of different planets. One of those planets you began giving birth uh, on what was Earth. And, and Earth reached at the 54 million year mark, it began to go through the first series of timeline genocides. When a divinity path birther like you goes through severe psychic attacks on one little part of their soul shard, it stirs up a hornet's nest of beings that want to protect you and to remove that soul shard from harm. Well, there were tens of millions of divinity birthers on Earth, and they all went through the same thing. Their, their soul families got stirred up and said, hey, what's going on? You're, you're severely harming these beings. We need to stop this. This was what created a transference of karma from Arcturian divinity path beings, being divinity path beings with other planets who are taking second dimensional life, raising it to third dimension, giving them skin suits with DNA technology and memories in it so they can begin building a legacy on a planet. You're a, found, you're a foundation founder being. Wow. Okay. So here you are it's on Earth. Foundation founder, yeah. Yeah. So here you are, a foundation founder being on Earth in the beginning of the Galactic Ascension Machine in awareness that you are going to karmically entangle probably a good 70% of the Arcturian people. And you gave them a warning um, and that said you must disentangle uh, quantumly from the soul family status. If you do not, you are all going to be pulled into this Ascension Machine and are going to be tools for resolving karma and go through an extinction. So there was a big separation in the soul families of the Arcturians so that the main Arcturian collective, the Dolma collective, would not be drawn into the Galactic Ascension Machine. And I've only talked about this a very, very few times. In ancient Lemuria, like you've talked about the three Lemurias in Atlantis, Eras. Uh -huh. What sort of relationship did that have to the whales then? So whales could reweave the oceans from damage. They could, when brought together in a communal process with the planet and the Atlanteans and or Lemurians, whoever was in charge of the surface, um, they could amass in great pods and actually create a song that could repel a time travel attack. <clears throat> now, Whales have been used in offensive combats, but they are a non-hierarchical order, non-duality, defensive, offensive system, meaning they can use their dreamweave frequency to make a species think they've invaded and destroyed the place, but actually they never did. So they could, like the civilization had a relationship with the whales, like they, they could communicate with them and they understood all their language and things like that? No. More like the beings are coming here to destroy us, and the whale could project their song, and the being would suddenly be in a dream world and would never realize that it went from the real to the dream. It's interesting you say that, like, about events that might cause harm. Because I told you I've watched Stargate Atlantis recently, and there was huh? an episode where, like, they're on the city, and... Um, there's whale creatures in in on the, the water planet where they are, and all of a sudden they start um, being triggered to um, um, gather around the city and sing their song, and the the psychic people in the community start really like hemorrhaging light through their ears and stuff like that. Yep. And what the whales were picking up on, long story short, was, was they perceived a future solar flare from the sun in the, the solar system and they were actually like calling out in a um, unity consciousness way of gathering around the city and asking for help but because the the earthlings that had repopulated Atlantis they didn't know what was going on and they were being injured and they were like thinking the whales are the issue but then they they realized that a solar flare was going and yes I 
for that yeah, episode. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yep. They worked in partnership to defend a the yep. community, but each other. They worked in partnership. It was very well done. That that's actually probably soft disclosure from the Atlantean Holler Records <laughs> that actually came out into a Stargate Atlantis storyline. Yeah, yeah. Like they actually had to raise the city yep. and go towards the sun and block it with the yep. shield of the city at a closer point to create a, a block and then it relieved the whole situation and the whales could actually um, um, I believe the whales actually tapped into the uh, the consciousness of the people there as well and, and did stuff it was, it was very interesting but, um, so, yeah go on one, one layer to add to that defending the story <coughs> I've, I've talked about in the galactic history the three rises and falls of Atlantis, the three fly, rises and falls of Lemuria, and that we've had four timeline paradoxes or uncreational events. There have actually been thousands of potentially more uncreational events that were thwarted with some assistance from the whales community. When both light and dark suddenly realize another force that isn't light or dark, has no expression of light or dark, but is its own conquering, evolving force from another sect part of the galaxy or another galaxy itself, something that is just going to overtake everything and retake it with its own imprint, the light and dark of this community got together, and when that happened, the whales would say, all right, you're in communion and union, we're going to defend this world. And there were many, many stories where we simply call them the non-hierarchical order whale warriors stepped forward, which meaning human beings in both the light and dark skin suits passed off their contracts as DNA skin suits and directly incarnated in a whale skin suits as walk-ins with their full knowledge of esoteric processes, whooped the snot out of whatever was invading, and then left the DNA skin suits and went back into their human skin suits. As the whales allowed them into their technology to use the weaponized expressions of their belief systems, and the whale would store that in their in their in their song line. So I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna give you an anchor in Akashic time for you to understand how old of a being you are here right now. So I'm going to go to 31 years ago. I want you to just imagine the big globe of our planet. No light pollution, people in balance, relative peace. And somewhere that looks over Iceland, you see the big, the big island. And you focus in and you, you see yourself being born into a baby and a mother and father loving you in eternal light. Okay. That is your first incarnation on Earth. And you came from the Arcturian worlds, not the Arcturus Prime, one of their subworlds, and a subcollective whose purpose here was to bring light, an expression of color and time, to another world that had an expression of color, light, and time. But you were going to blend two color worlds so a whole new expression could come. And the mother and father that, that bore you as a child went to Arcturus and found you as a living soul. And when they came back, they went through the incarnation process to make sure you could be spiritually transferred into a fetus and then be, begin to grow. Okay? Mm -hmm. And back then, you could live 200,000 years easily. That was a lifespan of a, of a being that was a direct incarnate through the, that, that expression. So by the time you were... You're middle-aged. You had learned your your big powers of what you were going to be doing in the world, how you were going to be blending the two colors of the two worlds. Um, and you discovered science and you discovered spirituality. Science understood the way the universe worked. Spirit understood the way the universe worked. They just both found a different way to explain it and believe in it and create and manifest with it. So that was your two-color expression, to be a scientist in expression and a spiritualist in expression and figure out how the two can come together in equal co-creation. Because in previous times, they had not come together in equal co-creation and created great disasters that have spread all over the universe. 
So as your spark frequency began to create these two sides, there were others that were doing it that came together in pods. And these pods would be like whales, um, whale expressions, where the Lemurian expression of you would psychically upload themselves into a whale DNA skin suit. And then all those others in your pod would also upload into a whale skin suit and live 40, 50 years inside that in harmonic creation with all of the waters of Earth. And then when they come out of that, they would take that 30 years of sound and translate into light. And then that light would be broadcast from technology into space. And then those beings that would that would go into whales would unmanifest their bodies and enter that stream of light as photonic beings. And then they go to the sun and then they take that song and begin to harmonize with the sun. And then when they would come back from the sun, they come back with a brand new ribbon of color that their artistic impression would have to create and manifest in this world. Thus, the reason of their birth. So you are one of these pe people that sing to the all of the universe at the micro level and the macro level. And when it's your I am presence time, you figure out how to translate it, that that new band of color. You've been here 31 million years trying to add new color to the seven color experience we have. That makes sense. I remember thinking, what's my favorite color? What's my favorite color? And I mean, it was, lights would go on and off. Things would change in the sky. I mean, whenever we were talking about things and I said, so I guess it's the rainbow. <laughs> my yeah. friend laughed and the lights flickered on and off where we were at. Next caller is 360, your name and where you're calling from. Hello, my name is Roseanne, and I'm calling from outside of Olympia, Washington. Hi, Roseanne from outside of Olympia, Washington. How can I help you today? Hi, I was wondering if you could tell me a little about myself, because I just found your show last weekend, and I've been listening to a couple shows during the week. really resonates with me. Well, so I'm curious you, about sorry. myself. All right, what I need you to do is tell me about your first 10 minutes of the day. Be as specific as possible when you first wake up. What I'm doing is tuning on to the infinite you is going through the process of becoming the finite you, and I'll be able to tune into your Kashuk record. You okay, well, I'm watching, out loud. I'm watching a friend of mine's dog, so I've been awakened early by her shaking and she needs to go out so I walk her she's blind as well so I walk her down the hall and I get her out the door and then I uh, proceed to make coffee and I'm milling about in the kitchen waiting for the dogs to come back in and um, people are already up in my house my husband and my daughter are getting ready for work at that time mm-hmm uh -huh. Did you dream last night? I didn't. I don't dream much. Okay. Very sparse, I, I, I can sporadic. See, I can see there's, there's a very, very difficult habit pattern in your life dealing with your dream world. Um, did you have a difficult childhood growing up? Somewhat, yes. Okay. And this my, is, this my is dad is... Go ahead. My dad is, like, Italian, and my mom is Filipino, so I think there was a clashing of of worlds in my early years. And this is actually, like, when you would go to school in the morning, would your parents argue before you left? Sometimes, yes. Very and different. That is what, that's, that's actually what's affecting you right now, and affecting your dream world. You woke up. Before you had to go to an education system, you got exposed to that energy. Even if they weren't arguing, there would be tremendous psychic data going between them, and you're stuck in between that. And uh, I'm going to identify. I'm going to identify your species, and, and similar to the lady before, your Arcturian collective also, and the type of Arcturian collective you are is called Ishnaga. And Ishnaga Arcturian collective is a very, very, very special collective. Their purpose is to collect information on all of the plant species of all of the galaxies. 
So quite literally, they are the great gardeners of the universe. And they are the great collectors of seeds of the universe. And your purpose here this lifetime is to be a collector of seed news, wisdom and seed knowledge. Um, I've had many experiences with different, different Native American tribes uh, doing seed songs and collecting seeds. And what's going on here is the lifetimes you led previously, uh, particularly in the Rapaho Indians and the Upper Shawnee Nation Indians, um, up into the Cree Indians in Canada and some of the Inuit tribes in, in Alaska. Um, and your purpose was to find the, the, the spring plants, the little tubers in the ground, and you would dry them and store them and turn them into medicine as well as food. And you have many lifetimes in, in the southern areas of Argentina, on the very tip of the bottom of Argentina, looking out to the South Pole. And that's the type of shamanic life you led where you were watching the astral world for the new children that were coming in. Do you have children this lifetime? I have two adult children, yes. Were they both hard births? I thought they were. They, they lasted more than 24 hours. Oh, yeah. And that's representative of, of negative spiritual contracts and fine print that was trying to eliminate those children from being in this world. Oftentimes when children come in, they come in in a migration pattern, and they identify all the migrating spirits that are coming into the world. And both of your children, they did not want them to be here because of the types of people that they are in their previous lifetimes. Both of them are very, very powerful. We'll simply call them weather-based individuals. They could very wow. much be controlled, but the weather would influence their emotions and they would ultimately be able to function as weather controllers themselves if they were to become awakened energy masters. And this does function with you too. You, you should be very much linked to the weather too because as the, as the plants go by the weather, if you have harsh weather, there are no plants. If you have positive weather, there is, there is a, you know, you know, you know, the plants are always affected. You understand what I'm saying here? Yes, very much so. I'm very much into plants. I just got a greenhouse two years ago, so I've been collecting seeds and starting seedlings and doing heavily gardening or farming, mini farming. So, and the um, Native American side of it that you were speaking of really resonates with me. Okay. I think my... Well, go ahead. I think my grandmother was like a shaman in the Philippines. She was like a healer of some sort. And she's she's gone now, but I still feel her presence with me. Um, I, I feel her presence, too. So we will call on the wheel of multi-dimensional callers, and the next caller, please, is going to be dun, 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 dun. Barrett. Come to the line. Yes, it's Barrett. How you doing today? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm doing fine. And you? I'm doing very good. What kind of questions do you want to start with? Oh, my or origin. Your origins. Just a second here as I tune into you. Ah. The first epoch that I see before your first immigration to Earth is a Safarian. Uh, a Safarian is an off-breed of, of Syrian and Octarian. Um, their particular purpose is to go and seek the very ends of the galaxy that they're living in. Um, each galaxy is a part of a universe, and they're galactic explorers. What they do is they go to the very rim of each galaxy and try to map the outside rim of each galaxy because they go in this big, wide circle around the end of the galaxy, and their type of technology is to increase the circuit 
circular motion of the galaxy, when the galaxy expands, they go to a brand new point of space-time, um, something that has not been imprinted by any other version of space-time. And this allows them to have ride dimensional rift waves to other other galaxies. So that once they finish learning and exploring their own galaxy that they're in, they go and explore other galaxies. Um, the Syrian side of them is how they invest into cultures along the way. There are planets and star systems in between the void spaces of galaxies that still have life forms on them that operate in different sets of rules. Um, so that's the type of being you were before you got here. What brought you here was a direct entanglement to the karmic ascension machine. Um, when the Seferian world, well, the worlds, they kind of leapfrog from galaxy to galaxy to galaxy. Their worlds are their ships. Um, got entangled in a... In a just a, the best way to describe it is a massive nebula of gas. Um, this gaseous nebula has living beings inside it that are representative of like lightning forms or lightning arcs that go through this massive, massive cloud of gas that does have some solid form in it. But each individual stroke of this lightning is um, actually an individual being. And this is what brought you here to Earth, was those lightning-type beings were encased into karmic ascension from timeline genocide and you like everyone else in the very edges of the universe that were experiencing a whole new frequency of time you got entangled here into earth um once you made it to the earth at 54 million years at 54 million years ago there was uh, a thing that brought you into the lemurian species and from that point forth you've been going back and forth in the reincarnation grid still trying to manifest your original time Hmm. Yes. So any kind of specific questions on your origins? Um, yeah. Um, I have been, I've been, uh, I met uh, several uh, other people also from the Syrian uh, community, so I guess it's not a coincidence at all. So I have been working a lot with the expansion of energy, and um, that makes sense also what you were saying now. Um, what, what specific skills do I have to to uh, to work on here on Earth at this time? Is it better? Yes, that's that's way better now. There's no there's no echo coming from that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So your your particular question that you wanted to continue with. Yeah, my my skill and how I can use them and uh, develop them further uh, now on in this lifetime. Um, that's going to be a determination of how much force of effort you want to put into the particular skills because you're open to a whole bunch of skills right now. Um, anything from being a healer to uh, a mathematician are available to you. You've completed your karmic cycle and you are, are on a point where when you pass on this lifetime, you will be in the incarnation grid. You won't be uh, anymore attached to the reincarnation grid. You finished that a long time ago. And the types of relationships you've had this lifetime are representative of the last letting go of karmic, karmic retribution. So when it comes to particular skill sets, this is where you put your nose to the grindstone and say, do I want to learn guitar? Do I want to be a dancer? Do I want to be a singer? Do I want to be a presenter? Do I want to be a psychic? What is it that I want to do as a manifest fourth dimensional being now to make changes in the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything is open, more or less. Yeah, so uh, a lot of things is uh, actually open, and um, it's just to choose. Correct. Kathy, is there yeah. anything that you wanted to add to that? I guess I'm, I'm, I understand your question in the big picture, but it seems to be that you have an underlying question with that. Is there something specific that you're really asking? Well, I have a lot of things uh, which I re really like. It's uh, art, photography, uh, dancing, of course, uh, and also singing and using my voice. I haven't done this in uh, in a big way, but it's uh, uh, if there is something which is more artistic, that would be, in, which is yeah, could be also be a living. That would be nice to. Oh, I see. So what you mean is that, that um, you're thinking about possibly having a career change and you wondered if there is something that you have a passion for that you can do for financial abundance. 
Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and also do uh, different things. So um, I have been working in office, and that was not my type. So I'm out of that. But I, I still uh, doing uh, city planning, uh, sustainable uh, urban design, and that sort of thing. And uh, of course, uh, nowadays we have to use sometimes at the computer. But I need to do all the things also to to get in uh, good shape, you might say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, when I look at your energy, to me it looks like whatever you've been involved with, um, it, it, it's, you know, I don't want to use the word boring, but to you it's a bit mundane. Um, yeah. Lack of passion. I mean, not that everyone can, um, I guess, get a job that is full of passion for them, but this to me seems very, you know, it's hard to keep your eyes open, hard to concentrate. You almost have to put cold water on your face sometimes. Um, and that's also kind of uh, spurring you on to take some action. Uh, when I look at the opportunities around you, I would say in a way your thinking is really in a positive way. I would say definitely something creative, but as opposed to something like uh, music or dancing, I'm thinking more like writing because you have mm -hmm. a very, very good imagination and the way you put words together that grows is actually quite unique. Um, I would suggest that you just start with something small, uh, maybe just a, a small story and put it down and then you'll start to see what you're capable of. Because I think it's a skill that you can definitely turn into something that will produce financial abundance for you. Uh, it will take a little bit of time to generate that um, very specialized formula that you need um, to write a book, a novel, whatever it is that you choose to write. So in the meantime, you probably will have to fall back on something you consider a bit more humdrum, um, boring. Not necessarily the same thing, but possibly the next year not so exciting while you hone your skill. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm, I have been starting um, a company together with a, a friend of mine where, where we are going to build communities and, and that, uh, that I feel uh, a lot of joy by, by doing that. So I, I, do you see anything trouble around it or some things Something we had to just try. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> like um, pitfalls. Uh, cha change in it, or or is there? Uh, yeah, is there a good goal for that? Um, can I ask you when you say communities, what does that mean? Well, uh, we we want to to grow edible food in the city, and uh, and also by using that as a product, we we also grow people together. Because when you are uh, meeting around uh, growing food and that sort of thing, it's uh, will also have um, circles into other uh, bigger okay, understand. things yeah. around it. Yeah. Okay. Um, when I look at this project and you and the energy melding, I would say that, you know, essentially you have a great idea, but it seems that a lot more logistical problems than you have taken into account. Um, okay. And the, uh, you know, I'm not even sure, but the pH level of something or other seems very important. I actually don't know what that means, but I'm sure that you will find out what that means or maybe okay. it will resonate with you. If you can work out more logistical issues, um, and by that I mean better planning, um, think all your worst case scenarios that could happen um, and plan around it, then you would have a much better chance of success. Uh, you also need to make sure that there's more publicity about it because I think you haven't in your mind given a, a sort of a plan for that kind of thing. Where would you promote it? Where would your customers come from? How would they know about you? You need to get all of that stuff in the works before you do anything because that will take time to build up. So by the time you're ready, you need that market already ready for you. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have just started with that, but uh, yeah, I see that. Mm. Okay. Um, I have been uh, working with crystal skulls and um, 
and it was really funny because uh, the first program uh, you Andrew had with Debbie, you, you they, Debbie started with this history or, or this story from Manchester, and I was actually in the Pluto cave uh, doing this ceremony, uh, which actually <laughs> brought this stone over to Debbie, and she continued the the, um, the journey with the stone. So, so but, uh, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't sure what the question was. Well, it, it was just, it was not a question, it was just oh. uh, that we have a connection uh, with the Pluto cave uh, stone with which Debbie uh, uh, brought to, to England. So, yes, the Pluto, the Pluto cave stone that also went to the birthing stone in England. Um, and that's yeah. something you should be considering yourself as going to visit uh, as many birthing stones in the area as possible. It is something that is going to begin to ground out your energy. There is a whole lot of flight energy in you right now, as if a bird that's just finished out learning how to use all of its wings and knowing how to dive bomb. And there's a part of you that just wants to take off and soar. Well, if you take off and soar, what skills do you have to come back to the nest if you're thousands of miles away? As a young bird, you don't. When a lot of young birds make it on that first run, they immediately try to bond and take on a companion. So to prevent this type of energy from going through you, you need to start taking pilgrimages to these different birthing stones and different places of power. It's vitally important in your spiritual progress that you know where they're physically at and know what the frequency of the place feels like. So when you are going through moments of alchemization or processing of dense energies, that you have the ancestral energies and the frequency of that place to call upon. Okay. Yeah. Good advice. Thank you. So what other kind of questions do you have? Yeah, my connections to dragons and, uh, in the his and the history and how to work with them now. Okay, well, you're at a stage that working with dragons is still, is still just out of your reach. All right, okay. for dragon communication to be functionable as a multidimensional being, you must be firm in your multidimensional standing already. You already must be able to work in your dream world seamlessly as well as this world. If you're trying to work with dragons and you're not seamlessly in and out of your dream world, you're going to run into a big problem of misunderstanding their plan and their agenda. And after a while, it can feel like you've been tied up and drawn into their plans without any of your own knowingness a part of it because you didn't have enough skills to see what a multidimensional, multifunctional, photonic being of light based from a planet is doing around you, that it's manipulating your one degree of separation, your separation of densities. Therefore, you must use discernment and awareness when you're functioning with those types of entities. Do you have a dragon relation in you? Yes, you do. A big percentage of the population in our world, like 17% does. But right now, that doesn't mean you should be using it. You use what you know first, the initial animals that are in your environment, whatever it is from cows to dogs to cats to crows to mice to rats to sharks or whales, each is a teacher in this bubble of reality. Begin working with those first. Work up the different scales of understanding until you can work with dreaming entities. Those are animals that know how to hibernate, like the bear. Within cyclical hibernation is the connection to the dream world, so you have full X and Y axis control of the dream world. And if you should find yourself being overtaken by an oppressive energy inside the dream, you outcreate it. You don't need to run from it. You change the very physical rules of the dreams because that is your manifest inherent ability to do that. Then is when dragons work with you, when you can manifest your inherent rights, and they, they can be in co-creation equally with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other kind of questions you want to ask? Uh, so, about some health stuff. Um, the, my left side is not uh, in proper shape, and I had a frozen shoulder on the left side, too. Uh, which is not uh, um, totally healed, and back of my heart. Can you say something about that? And what was the last bit about the heart? Back of her heart. Back of her heart. Back yeah. Of her heart. Uh, back of my heart. Hmm. To me, it looks like um, you, you've. I don't know. It looks like an old injury, almost something that might have happened to you when you were young, and as you get older, and the environment, the weather, you know, the things keep changing. 
it's almost like it's uh, stiffening up. Um, I suggest that you probably should pursue something like um, deep tissue massage uh, just to start to loosen things up because if you do that, then the, the, the frozen shoulder and the back probably will loosen up so that you can do more work with it. But you have to start from somewhere before you can get into the small, intricate parts of that part of your body. In terms of heart, I look at it and it looks like it beats very fast. Um, one of the things I probably suggest there is maybe you can do some uh, breathing exercises with your meditation. Do you do that already? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, then I would focus more on that. Um, try and find just find a way. It's almost like in yoga where you can have the fast, rapid breathing and the slow breathing, so that you can control it more yourself. And once you can control it in your meditation, you'll find that you can control it more in your everyday life. So when your heart is beating faster, you will just automatically be able to acknowledge it and then swap into a different kind of breathing. And then when you can do that, you'll find the heart isn't so mm, uh, so much pressure. Okay, yeah, thank you. Pressure, and I got, I got one more thing that I'd like to, to put on to that. At, at a yearly early age, your body was severely challenged by a debate that turned into an argument between your mother and father. Um, what do you remember about that early, early childhood? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You are uncovering so true, right? a can of worms, right. You have to yeah. acknowledge that, that your physical body has taken psychic abuse between two adults who didn't wa aware that you were being psychically abused by their own energies. Yeah. You need to let down. You need to go into hibernation. You need to tell the inner girl that's been damaged that it's time to heal. That's the first yeah. layer of intent. The next layer of intent is what you can you do to lure the inner girl out of her pain and suffering and into your body of the modern so she can see what she's already done and accomplished. Then it'll be easy yeah. for her, the innocent child, to be out and playing and be full of joy and happiness and creation and inspiration. Yep. All righty, Dahan, we have got to move on to the next caller, but this was really fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think we have a caller. Hey. Caller. Hey, Free, how you doing today? I'm doing real good, Andrew and Dale. I'm doing great, Free. Nice to hear from you. You want to call and get a reading from Andrew? Oh, Are you hearing me? Not as, yeah, not real good. Down, got to turn down your radio. Okay, yeah, that might be a little better. Uh, yeah, I had to crank it up because it wasn't getting much fun, but now I'm in a lot. And I just turned off the uh, loudspeaker, so we should be good, not getting all kinds of feedbacks. Yeah. And, you know, Can you give me a reading? Yeah, because what I've got is I'm um, JP read me as a truth. Five six energy ray of his is run that he's for the two five six rays, and I've been frustrated. I lived my whole life based on why this this world changed before Y two K, and I'm twelve years over time now. <laughs> so the um, right. my own personal consciousness is that a little bit of a angry resentment, rebellion. But come on, get it over with and. Um, I've been work. I've had a hard time working on having enough self appreciation, self love. That goes back to one little details. But that goes back to some early childhood nonsense should not have been taking place. And I've had an opportunity here. I've been sitting around 
and educating myself of not doing the personal cleanup organization I need to do in my own townhouse and on my own life. Uh, I've got ideas that um, professionally, it would be probably good for me to work with Sherry Edwards because I do have some master's degree training in and a very close to it to appeal to what she does. And I'm trying to get a, a, um, um, a read as to if my energy seems to be simply matched to what Sherry Edwards does or my life has been without direction for too many years now. All right, I've, I've got a beat on your energy. All right, uh, this, this is going to knock your socks off, so I, I would advise you to, to be sitting. All right, first thing first is you're a star, you're, you're, you're a star seed. You, you are actually Octarian and um, a Navrian. A Navrian is a very, very rare species of energetic beings, and when a Navrian and Octarian blend, and they, they create um, what's called a rainbow being, and this rainbow being is allowed to break rules and enter and incarnate in any planet that it wishes. It is one of creation's trades of energetic beings, and when the Navrians and the Ecturians bred and this species began, they took um, home world in, a, in a, the Andromeda system. It was a very small planet, but there were, there were thousands and thousands and thousands thousands of them to live on this planet. And uh, as they began to evolve, uh, they saw many of races and were able to tell in their own way the fall of some of these races. So they chose to devolve, to unascend, and, and to break their spiritual essences into dozens of other spiritual essences. And they allowed those spiritual essences to be incarnated on multiple worlds in multiple timelines in multiple galaxies and in multiple dimensions so that means you are a multi-dimensional spirit that has an oversoul that is playing the grand chess game of all of your past present and future lives at the exact same moment in real time you following me so far yes mm -hmm. right. Arturian and, and what was what was the other one Arturian and, and Anavrian Anav 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 it, it, it is something that doesn't it doesn't exist in our, in our current system of language, it is an extremely rare, rare species. I've actually only met three other three other people in my entire thing. This, um, what that means is you have ultimately have the clean slate in this lifetime here. You asked if you were to be do, doing what Sherry Edwards. Well, you would be doing your own version. Sherry Edwards is just her expression. The, the norms expression that is the right now has, has not manifested from your other lifetimes. Uh, um, you've said that you haven't been fulfilled in your life. It's because you have other parts of your Anabrian side as well as your Arcturian side. You are, you are existing here as an Earth-based entity that has relations to dozens and dozens of other species, but you're still an Earth -based, seeing it from an Earth-based entity's point of view. I think the most advantaged things you can do in the, not in the next 30 days is to look into someone that can do past life regression for you. Um, specifically, that's going to return you to the time of Egypt, um, about 18,000 B.C., and you're going to ask this person who's going to help you regress to take those lifetimes because those are the lifetimes that you determined you were going to stand against the, the darkness in in 2012, that this age, that from that 18,000 year period to this period that we are in 2012, uh, was the end of the region, that you would agree to live lifetimes here and learn everything that Earth has to teach, and then you were going to reunite all the other sides of your other past lives, and you were going to lay down a library, all right, order library where people can come to learn um, free of religious dogmas, free, free of the things things that make people want to fade away from the woo-woo stuff. It is a place where the light is on to welcome people. And um, it's you sharing your knowledge, not only of your, your vibratory healing, but all of the knowledge is the grand and librarian, and you're going to be the protector of this librarian. That's what I'm sensing for you. And I know you're having a tough time bringing this, but, but I'm so over 
overwhelmed with the Spirit saying, please tell him more, tell him more, tell him more, tell him more. Well, you, the physical you, have to understand the intention behind my voice of why in the 18,000 BC range you need to connect there. Well, I physically see a man and a woman that are that are lovers then. In the Ireland, it's you. Both people are you. You and two spirits at the same time. That that I cannot even begin to tell you how how rare that is. All right, when you have soul contacts, soul groups that are Octurian or Nervian, it, it it allows humans can't do or other species cannot do. Okay, example. That means you could have true love with yourself and have a totally complete lifetime, which you did. So you were able to go through all of the levels of this ascension in a lifetime with a life mate. And you are judging that here now. And since you don't see that, that here, that is what has been holding you back from taking steps forward with shoes on, tied tight, a cap on your head, and running into the wind. That's, that's what stopped you is because you don't have that true love side. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess that could be. The friend that I was in love with transitioned exactly 19 years ago this last night. <laughs> and okay. I had a major dream where I brought them to um, the Grand Teton Mountain and the <laughs> activities there. <laughs> and, um, well, but the, it, uh, you talk about that the love, love I guess, in return. Yeah. Um, and she came back to me 14 and a half months later and <laughs> said that um, she had fulfilled, I had fulfilled what I wanted to do with And she's helping me from that mm-hmm. side. Not... What did she tell, what did you want to say about the library? Oh, well, I I'm, I'm felt like I'm sort of like this archivist for all the, as many as I can spiritual books and things of that sort. <laughs> so I have a pretty, mm-hmm. pretty large collection except they don't have any Islamic stuff. Okay. Well, a lot of- essentially, essentially, you want to be on the path, you want to be on the cutting edge. Think of Dave, Dave Corso here owns a radio station. He could have chose to, to go and open a gun range or anything else. I think you were at the stage Dave Corso was 13 months ago, and you want to open a, a spiritual bookshop that has places can come and sit and study and be quiet, uh, meditation rooms as as well as halls and halls and halls of books. And you, the the person, will be able to do your own healing vibration energy inside there and then invite people that are like me or, or Dan in, in, in work there as investees and not as employees. Putting a network of people that, that respect the knowledge there, respecting that the light is always on. It doesn't mean 24 hours. The light of knowledge is always on. And... I, I I really think if you if you put your heart and mind to finding someone that can help, like Rebecca Jernigan, I believe she's in Kansas City, to tell you the truth, and she's an incredibly good person to help you get back into your past lives. She would be she would be absolutely happy to do a reading for you, or I, I mean I mean I can do one, but I really think Rebecca would 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 open doors for you on your past lives that that her vibration. And, and that vibration of those past lives will really open you up. I mean, I really I understand have, why you... Go, go ahead, Dale. I'm, yeah, I'm getting a message here, too. Uh, free, this is... This is really a message for you. And what I'm seeing is you're already doing it now. And just with the word, just with your chat name, Free Sovereign, you're, that's, that's giving on a frequency. And if you can create the ability to envision yourself partaking in... All right, here's the message. I'm just going to put it out there. I see... I see Sovereign, Free Sovereign here, uh, working with the Akashic, I don't know if it's the Akashic Hall of Records, but you're going to be implementing or having the facilities to have people come to you to get to see all of their past lives and, and all, and being able to have the mechanics there, because with the libraries that you've been in the histories that you have right now, you're going to you're going to take it to a more of a of a 
galactic level and I sense that you're going to have some training very possibly off planet training to get you up to speed to give you the training and again time has no meaning uh, in this realm so what you could be let's just say for instance you could be gone for 50 earth years but it could only it may only be a month here on on earth plane uh, but when you come back, you're going to have the knowledge and the skills to have like a little shop. Yeah, have people come in. You may have a device that they'll be able to wear, but you'll be able to walk them through it. You'll be able to access what it is that they need to clean up their spiritual selves to get them leap to propel them into the knowledge of all of their past life uh regressions, aggressions, and work them out. So you're going to be more of like a um, the spiritual healer in a way that is going to be able to take it to a, a whole different level. So that's that's what I that's the vision I just saw that they wanted me to share. Thank you, Dale. The question, another well, question comes in is, what is the best course of um, development for myself so that I become much more friendly with everyone in the world. They, as I mentioned to JP um, in one of uh, Frank Jordan's sessions, I grew up in a childhood of energy takers and I never learned or had a model of how to be a good energy giver and also to connect with other people rather than just presenting myself. How is that my best development to become a good person to interact with everybody else and ruin my contact? All right. Um, th I understand the message, and um, it's really about, and it's not who you contact. It's inside you. Um, you, you. You believe you weren't taught how to love, but you were taught how to love. As I said, you have an aubrey and blood in you. And you have to trust the psychic side again. You're going to go through a time of he understanding why you mistrusted, uh, why this life happened this way, and why you went through so much of the forgetting and so much of the anger now only to blossom in the now. And that was because you, you had to hide from the cabal. If they knew who you knew years ago, you would not be making this phone call right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's how rare you are. Um, there are going to be people that are going to seek you out for your genetic lineage um, because there are species and races out there that right now that can no longer procreate. They have cloned and genetically modified themselves for so many years, they can no longer have a new generation of offspring. You have a particular genetic code that in reality can help restart them, but you're a free sovereign. You understand what that means, and the only way that that would happen is if and if that means true love, that means you would be able to help that being heal enough that they could make their own sex organs, and then either you could mate or you would help heal another per another one of them that would have the opposite sex organs, and you would be like the adopted grandfather of that family. Mm -hmm. You want to know how how you how you can be more likable? Well, I, I really think it comes to the grounding and doing what you what you do, you need to be around people. Example: If you had a if you had let's say a bookstore, and uh, you had two employees, you'd have to talk to them every day, and you'd have to talk to all the customers that come in there every day. And then you would be forced to talk to people about religious subjects, and you, you would be put in a scenario where you would recognize people respecting you and loving you because you have this shop and this have this light of energy out, and it wouldn't matter if the person you you were before or what you thought you were before manifested and changed everything in your life it's really it's really it's really the time for you to shit or get off the pot action uh, <laughs> and the last right, you're gonna pop out a hemorrhoid if you don't last five months have been just sort of sitting around here and learning as much as i can on wsr and reading frank jordan's books but not doing what i need to do <laughs> right. which is shit Sharing it in a in a position of knowledge, I mean, I really see you, you. You could open this bookshop really easily. It doesn't need to be big, and 
you can go online or go to the local libraries that are selling books and fill it up really fast and then begin to order books for people. You know, there's dozens of people in your area you can invite to come and give talks. There's so many, and that, that fits your personality. All of those things, all right? When you own your own business, there's a new part of your personality that's going to come out. All right, and underlying magic in your personality. I mean, I see so many, so many things for you, but I, 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 my personal belief of the greatest healing you could have right now is the past life regression. Um, you need to be linked to that. You need to, to, to go through that remembering. And uh, there'll be tears in that, and there'll be tears of joy and happiness and, and, and all that, and the sadness too. And you're going to come out of it, and you're, you're going you're gonna to sit on it for a few days, and you're going to really go, and, all right, this starts to make me understand why I had my mother, my father, my, my siblings, the life that I had, and the life that I have now, and, and to the point where oh, what the past lives are telling me. I think... It's going to be like to bring up a warm coat, and all of a sudden it just fits and feels right. And all of the other emotions that you just said will will fade away as you as you walk into your power and own it with truth. Great. I do we certainly appreciate that. And I know Rebecca's in the Kansas City area, but I think she's a bit um, farther east. But um, I oh. I listen to her shows, and I've. Um, that, uh, communicate with her occasionally on Facebook too. Well, I, I know she does a lot of things by the phone. It would be it would be your first step into healing of saying, "All right, I, I need to communicate someone that I've had a, an on-air radio relationship with, and I trust enough that I would call." And I believe she she is the top vibration for you. Excellent. I, I also want to put. I also want to give uh, this to it as well. Start using the word I am, because we have used this for negative forces, and this is how the proof. See, we're, we're beings that, uh, that have been so indoctrinated with the, just with the senses that we have used. Start looking at it like I am a, a healer. I am a bookstore owner. Um, so much of the time, you know, we've been raised in the world like, I'm not worthy. I'm not this. And guess what? We manifested that without us really understanding the words. So the words that you start to use from this moment forward start saying things like, I have confidence. I have ability. I am a person that is growing. I am a person that is, has abundance of wealth and knowledge coming to me. And man, stand back because when you start seeing this stuff happen, and this is for everybody that's here listening and on chat. When you start saying these words and you start put, putting this, these phrases together and you, you, and you say the words, I am beautiful, I am loved, I am full of abundance, I am creating my new reality, you're going to start seeing little, you're going to start seeing little bits of evidence come forward and it's like anything you do, man. The more you practice it, the more the more you manifest, the more you see come your way. And that is a huge confidence builder. That's how I that's how I built that's where I am today. Because I started seeing the beliefs changing in what I was thinking and saying from a negative to a positive where I was re starting to reap the benefits of that. And it just takes time with understanding that I am a creator. Uh, I am in charge of me. I'm not relying, no longer relying on others to bring it to me. I have the ability to heal. I have the ability to bring the knowledge forward. And it's happening here in the now, right now. That's true. Well, thank you very much um, for that one, Dale. I, I have experience that I am, too, and uh, Frank Jordan's meditation on the 21st is like a big thing for me is I'm the being divine love to all life and particularly being love, divine love to myself. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, thank you both. And you are welcome. If you have any other questions, uh, give us, give Dale or us a holler back or
each different bubble of reality is true. A galactic historian is a person that looks at all the lines of dramatic karma. Nudge, nudge. It's the holy grail. <laughs> Improvise. <laughs> Mysterious. It's counter psychic intelligence. Why is DNA farming of this dark luster so important? Because we do manifest our reality. We do create our reality. Thank you.